All right, here we go. Um, in the description there, I, uh, I guess I uh, wrote where I'm at in the book right now. And uh, for those of you tuning in, thanks. For those of you not tuning in, uh, thanks also. All right. I was in the parking lot adjacent to the alley where I had just copped some shitty street cocaine and I was heading back to the bus home where I would be made whole again by laying in bed and peacefully snorting cocaine all alone with no one around to bother me. The bus ride home was uneventful except for the boner in my pants from just the sheer excitement of holding. I probably never even needed to do that coke because just knowing I had it had lifted my spirits to the heavens. I was bouncing off the walls with glee. Drugs. I don't even know what to say after that. Drugs. I love them. I love changing the way I felt. Even if I felt great, it could be made better with some drugs. Until the misery brewing inside me became so great that no amount or combination of drugs could fix shit inside of me. I remember the day or the moment I was done. I smoked maybe half a joint with a guy and then tried to drive up to some place just a short ways off to grab a beer. Tried as the operative work, because driving even that distance was impossible. My body was shaking so hard all the way down to my foot, which was shaking so hard that I couldn't even press down on the accelerator. The guy I was hanging with pointed out that we were only going three miles an hour, and I told him that I was shaking so bad all over that I couldn't accelerate. He said that was all he needed to know and asked that I pull over because he was getting out. The guy was a total scumbag and still is to this day. I'd never ditch anyone in that situation, but he didn't even think twice. I had just gone through a huge breakup, which he knew about, and I was in a foreign country. His. The d this dick uh, thought that splitting, matter of fact, it was a cool thing to do. He may be the shittiest person I've ever met, and I've met plenty. He cancels almost all the others out. He would give the appearance of cool respectability wherever he went. He was well liked, but not by me. He was just a guy to get high with, and only if no one else was around. He was a fuck and a liar, and although I'd never wish him any harm, I'd never go out of my way to see him or help him. Fuck him. That was very gratifying. I believe the point I'm at in the main story I'm recounting here is I was in the back of this white Baptist church airing out my feet and planning the next big move on my adventure back home. I was completely unimpressed and dismissive of what they had going on there in their church. I was only thinking of me and getting a holy ride out of these squares. I found the window of time to ask and I did. I made a simple request, a ride to the Maryland house and nothing more. A seven mile drive round trip at best and I'd be forever grateful. That's one of those games I've always played with people. Let me bum a cigarette off you and I swear I'll never bother you again. If you just give me two dollars, I'll leave you alone and you'll never have to hear from me again and I'll be out of your hair forever. It was just a hustle, just a way to get what I want without letting you feel like you were doing me a favor. Or gloss, or gloss over the fact that I'm asking for help because I don't really want you to think I need help because I've got it all together. I'm a classic song and dance man. My pattern doesn't end. Not before I've managed to confuse you and throw you off the track. I'll apologize so long and hard you'll think you did something wrong. Making myself vulnerable even when I'm dying is not a thing I'm willing to do. I threw the pitch and the gang there got into a huddle and for five or more minutes discussed what my fate would be. What they came up with was to turn myself into the police and let myself be arrested for vagrancy. The police, they said, would then contact my parents and would provide me with the funds to get home that I would then be accountable for. This, of course, sounded like a stupid idea. Why the hell would I voluntarily have myself arrested? Who's going to arrest the drunken politician guy who tried to kill me by dropping me off in the middle of the highway? Or the pervert jerking, jerking off in his car? Or the locals down in Myrtle Beach threatening to kick some lost, broke kid's ass? What did they understand? That I was sunburned and broke and hitchhiking with no plan because I came from a normal family? Yeah, I was going to voluntarily turn myself into the cops and give my dad another opportunity to hit my mom. I was going to turn myself in so that for the next 50 years my mother would have more ammo for guilt and shame with me. Not a fucking chance. Turn myself in so everyone in my family could blow everything out of proportion and tell me how selfish I was.